They're loving that nuke deal in Iran, but some of our allies look like they want to run. France saying it wanted stiffer conditions. Yes, France. And Israel? Such a deal does not block Iran's path to the bomb. Such a deal paves Iran's path to the bomb. The deal would lift sanctions almost immediately. And this at the very time that Iran is stepping up its aggression and terror. The reason why some here say forget lifting sanctions on Iran, it's time for Congress to levy more sanctions on them. Hi everyone, I'm Brenda Butner. This is Bulls and Bears. Here we are with the Bulls and Bears this week. Gary B. Smith, Jonas Max Ferris, John Layfield, along with Hadley Heath and Chuck Rocha. Welcome to everybody. Okay, Hadley, instead of, instead of planning to lift sanctions, do we need tougher ones for Iran? Yes, we certainly don't need to be fiddling around with lifting sanctions on Iran at this moment. We need to see proof from Iran that they're willing to stop entirely with their nuclear program. We need to go back to our original negotiation goals because this is a negotiation. This is not a gift for Iran. This is something we need to think about globally. The global economy is better off when we have geopolitical stability and will be better served by that in the long run if the United States can ensure that Iran is not on a path to nuclear weaponry. Well, you know, Chuck, a lot of our friends are saying that this enemy, Iran, needs more sanctions, not lifting them. What do you think? Well, I had an uncle named Leroy, and if you took Leroy 12 fish, he complained because you didn't bring him 15. He was just mean and angry, and that's what's happening in the world right now. So what we need to do is, go, is let this thing see itself through. There's still three more months before we see the conclusion of this. And overwhelmingly across the board, outside of these two countries, you've seen people say we have a process, we're getting things done, and let's see this thing through to the end. Because we don't want to send our, our sons and daughters into harm's way in this. Let's negotiate. Let's see what happens. If it falls through, then anything's on the table. But let's see this through to the end before we start casting stones. Okay, you're right. It, it is still in development. But Gary B., the only reason Iran came to the table was because the sanctions worked. Why lift them now? Exactly, Brendo. You know, once a scorpion, always a scorpion. Iran, North Korea, the whole bunch of them, they can't help themselves. We cannot trust this country. And as you point out, what happened was when we had economic sanctions, you had a, comp a, a, a country with basically the economy in ruin. Oil revenues have consistently dropped off. They can't even clear economic transactions through the global financial system. You have an inflation rate of 40 percent. These are crippling things that came about only because of the economic sanctions. That's the only reason they're at the table. I agree with Hadley. Forget about any negotiation unless you have two choices. You either bomb them totally, which we're not going to do, obviously, or you keep the screws on until they get rid of all their nuclear capabilities. Well, Jonas, um, Gary B. mentioned North Korea and Iran. You say we can learn something from looking what happened to North Korea. Yeah, how has this sanction policy worked as far as these regimes we don't like? The North Korea and Cuba, we've been sanctioning them. To and they, we, they don't even have a, a pile of oil and gas to live on off of to support the regime. So once you got that scenario, then the sanctions are really never going to, in the long run, change anything over there. So I would suggest just getting rid of all the sanctions and replacing it with tariffs. The difference is Tariffs make money for America, unlike sanctions, which just stop economic anything. They also let an industry develop in a country, and then that industry puts pressure on their government to get the tariffs removed, So, because you can move tariffs around like we do with China, and they, yet they, you know, there's no industry in, in Iran because the government runs everything. If you had companies exporting drugs to America, then all of a sudden, like, oh, we don't like what you're doing with this uh, nuclear route. All of a sudden, we had a 100% tariff, and the, the, the rug companies are calling up the, uh, the crazy people running the country saying, you got to chill out. We want to sell rugs. So, It'd be better, I think, for everybody to go more in a free market with tariff penalties in place right. when necessary. Well, that, that's not on the table. Um, John, what do you think? Um, they sponsor terrorism. They support our enemies. They call for death to America, the elimination of Israel. Do we want to lift the sanctions or put the screws tougher? The, the sanctions are working. I, I don't understand who negotiated this deal. This makes Neville Chamberlain look like a genius. <laughs> we had four aces. We have four aces, and we're sitting across from somebody that we know has a, a pair of deuces. That's all. 
And they tell us the negotiation terms. They tell us that we can't touch their nuclear infrastructure, so we're not going to touch any of their nuclear infrastructure in this deal. It looks like we won't be able to inspect the military bases as well. They've already hid one nuclear facility in Fort O'Mountain. They say that they're Fort O'Facility. They say that they're going to uh, turn that into a peacetime uh, plutonium uh, nuclear uh, facility. When we trust them with that, Gary B is right. We, they're 40% inflation. You have double digit employment. 70% of Iranians are under 30 years old. They are prime for a revolt. We have done with this, made them one of the richest countries in the world. The reason they are celebrating is because this government, we just made sure that they are going to stay in power for a very long time. And they have money to sponsor terrorism. They're going to have a lot of money now to sponsor terrorism. Chuck? I think that you can tell how good this deal is by the, watching what happened in the country this morning. The right-wing newspapers in that country, the conservatives, came out and said this is a horrible deal for Iran. It's horrible for us. We don't need to have all these inspectors in here seeing what we're doing. And when, I, when you can see the side that's really not our friend over there upset with it, it makes me feel like at least we made progress. We can stick our head in the sands and act like this ain't happening. If you're not going to blow them off the face of the earth, we've got to have a conversation about how we live on the same earth as them. Hadley, they were partying in the streets. That's right. And the role of the United States government when we come to the table in these negotiations is not to hope that everyone walks away with a fair deal or a good deal. The goal of the United States government should be to look out for our nation's interests, for the interests of our allies and for the interests of global security. And so I think when we talk about this, it's not really our role to be, you know, the, the umpire or the referee or to make sure that Iran's getting a fair deal. They have their own negotiators for that. We have to look out for America's interests. Gary Vee? Well, I, maybe Chuck has never encountered a bully in his life, but the best way to do, deal with a bully is you don't negotiate with bullies. You punch them in the face immediately, and then you go from there. You know, with, with Iran, you know, uh, uh, Jonas brought up, well, what do sanctions do? I'll tell you what sanctions do, it did in this case. It prevents them from developing their nuclear arsenal. They can't trade with com com countries like France and Germany. They can't develop their weapon systems. They can't acquire electronics. They they can't enrich their plutonium. That's what happens when you have economic sanctions to lift them. No wonder they were celebrating there. Basically, they got all the good stuff, and we got nothing in return. Jonas? If the North Korea got nuclear weapons with sanctions, well, I'm just saying we could have played the sanction game with China and Vietnam because they're communists. Their, gov their governments aren't perfect. China's not ideal human rights place. Yet we have a relationship with them with a business relationship. We do tariffs if necessary. We've got some issues with the currency, but in the end of the day, that's a better scenario than if everyone just walled off China and they were a totally nutty communist regime right now, not doing business with anybody, which is kind of what happens in a lot of these countries when everyone walls them off. Okay, last word to John. The sanctions were working because they get most of their money from oil. That's completely different from North Korea, and that's completely different from Cuba. We absolutely let them off the hook. We don't have to have, it's not a binary option. We either have to bomb them or take a bad deal. These sanctions were working. We have agreed to help Iran fight ISIS, and we have agreed now to make them one of the richest countries in the world by lifting these sanctions and keeping those guys in power. It's exactly opposite of what we did in the early 80s when we sponsored Iraq, which didn't work out very well against Iran. We're just sponsoring the other side right now. This is a disaster. Okay, sorry guys, we gotta go.